to walk us through Cloud9 Tempest's win. All right, thank you, Freak. Coming into this one, Aframu predicted the Cloud9 Tempest win. Now 1-1. One, one. It's like a best of three start of the new. Why'd you pick that? How'd they win? Uh, Cloud9 Tempest really stepped up this game, has stepped up. And actually, Cloud9 did a very impressive move when they held the top tower. And one of the things they reminded me of was Mani had us read Sun Tzu's Art of War book, where one of the major points in that book is where you thwart the, your opponent's strategy. And C9 did a very good job by holding the top tower. And EG really wanted to go for an objective-focused game. And they stopped that. And then EG just looked like they didn't know what to do after that. Yeah, it was a really awkward-looking opening because, I mean, Yuzuki went top lane, got towered over, but no turrets fell. How did that really play into the laning phase of the game, Lake? Uh, so it was kind of weird because Altec was basically 1v1-ing the Lee Sin for pretty much the entire game. Yeah. And it was like a rise thrash versus like a... Uh, like, like the they're EG's bottom lane. So hmm. it's like this weird mixture of events where uh, Altec's pretty much like the top laner now, and he's just kind of like... You know, just farming, and you know, he, he, all he cares about is, is CS and making sure that he's up above Yellow Pete. And uh, that kind of, like, to be honest, Altic really did not do anything this game. Yeah. But like, all all that happened was Kaz pretty much um, made the plays. He made the plays with uh, with Ryze and Thresh, and they got a billion kills. Ryze got super farmed, and then Soraka held mid lane. And if Soraka is ever farmed, and you know, she's doing well, she hasn't died. That's like the number one rule on Soraka, is mm -hmm. to never die mid lane. That, that's like, that's all you have to do. And once you're um, scaling, uh, like lanes get really strong, like Ryze and, and Corky, then they just pre pretty much become unkillable. Yeah, it was a 1-0-16 Bishu on Soraka, 3-1-11 on Kez, which is much better than his performance in the last game. And also, Snoopy, was not finding his way in a lot of these games. Do you want to talk a little bit about Snoopy Afro? Uh, usually it's hit or miss when Snoopy is ganking early game. If he gets the first gank off and it's successful, then he can snowball it into a lead for his team. But if it fails, then Snoopy is nowhere to be found after it fails. Yeah, he had the one early death, and then also there was a turret dive where Ryze ended up picking up a double kill. If we can actually get this clip up on our screen, this is a really key moment because Ryze had been farmed, but he was babysit a little bit, and he needed this to come back into the game. Let's just roll this clip. Link, talk us through it. So pretty much they find Evelyn in the jungle. Uh, Lisa's kind of being really aggressive, and uh, I'm not sure why. Yeah, Snoopy flashes in. forward, and this is kind of a really bad situation to be in because... Uh, like I'm not, I, I really don't know what they're doing. Like they're just kind of diving recklessly, and Ryze just is basically going to get a free double kill. And at this point, this kind of uh, seals the game because Ryze, if if he's able to ever get farmed in the early game and pick up kills like that, it's it's incredibly hard to come back, especially when you have a Soraka on your team and you have Evelyn um, invisible pressure. So it just allows Ryze to just ramp up and farm really really uh, hard. And you can see that he had a, a 20 minute Seraphs. Rod of Ages and a Merc Treads, and that's that's incredible. Yeah, it's really interesting actually how in game one, Inox was the beneficiary of kind of a gank, yeah. snowballed the game on Jax, and here Yuzuki gets babysat a lot and then ends up taking over on Rise. It still wasn't entirely over though. There was a nice turret dive try by Evil Geniuses and was probably the nail in the coffin. It was about 18 minutes into the game. If we can pull that clip up as well, just to see exactly why it went wrong after move. Take it away. Uh, so Snoopy jumps in here and they look to kill Yuzuki because he's the primary target you should go for here. So they cut him off with Crapo and Yuzuki flashes with the wall and his team backs him up. And then you have Soraka who just makes your bruisers super fed and Yuzuki gets a heal and just turns around and wrecks face. And now EG is on the run. Kez flashes forward because they know they're going to win this fight. They have the momentum in their favor. And Paul Belter, oh, damn that old. <laughs> Not quite where and it And uh, uh, Cloud9 Tempest just cleans up after this when their whole team backs them up. So it was a very poorly executed dive by EG there, and Cloud9 Tempest just capitalized. And, and meanwhile, you have the, the top laner, I'll take, taking bottom tower. So. Yeah, the top, he really was a top laner this game. Really isolated playstyle. He ended 6 2 and 4, but that was off of really passive play. It was strange watching this game early on because Cloud9 Tempest was really saving their flashes. Do you think that was some type of mindset they have that they might be over now that they've won game two? I, I still feel like they are kind of playing that passive, but uh, I feel like uh, Clown and Tempest, just from watching them play, I, I think if they get the momentum going, that they're just going to be more and more aggressive, and they're going to play much, much better, um, and they're going to be more confident in their plays. And uh, it just it just seems like just watching that game, like game one was just like a warm-up, game two, they're you know they're getting to the groove, and maybe game three, if they can get their picks again, then they'll, get, they'll be really strong. 
And uh, I know EG is kind of a team that kind of likes to tilt time to time. So uh, it's really important that they don't lose their mom momentum from game one. Yeah. And they just kind of think about their uh, picks. Yeah, it was a 36-minute victory for EG in game one. Now a 32-minute defeat. If you're EG right now, Aphromu, what do you try and do uh, picks and bands wise what are your priorities coming into this game now with your first pick again honestly I would take away Soraka like from Bishu because it's really easy for them to hold mid lane with that and Bishu's just been doing really well in the first two games and so you want to take him off his comfort pick right away and instead of Manny Morgana I would take stop Manny Morgana ban Soraka and then I would look you have to be really good at mind games now in this series because they're going to try and force 2v2 this game. I expect them to go bottom when Cloud9 Tempest is purple side. So you just have to be... I think EG has to invade and find out where they're going to go in their lanes to be able to get the 2v1. Yeah, and as far as predictions for this next game, little bit, who do you predict and why quickly? <sighs> Honestly, after watching that game, I think Cloud9 Tempest, uh, I think they they found uh, what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's kind of just like... They need to bring EG down to their level, and it's just bring them to solo queue. And, and if they're able Create to create chaos, just yeah, yeah, try and yeah, stop if, with their exactly. Team. Like, like if they just uh, take away uh, EG's objective controlling uh, base game style, then it's really easy for. Because uh, I, I still strongly believe that uh, Clown and Tempest has stronger individual laners. So if they can do that, then I think they'll win. Aphromo, you call the last one. Who you call here? <sighs> I looked at EG's faces and looked like they were having a bad day, and their mood is really down right now, so I'm going to have to go with Cloud9 Tempest. All right, double Cloud9 Tempest for the picks, but we have to take a three and a half minute broadcaster cooldown. The series is tied up with one win each. After the break, we'll jump into game three between Evil Geniuses.